This is the most misunderstood Bible verse in the whole New Testament. It's not the verse that he said, even though I did like his insight. The most misunderstood Bible verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 29. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? Let's take a look and see what a few scholars and theologians who have their own Bible commentary say about this verse. Starting in Clark's Bible commentary, who was a theologian and preacher in the Methodist church, he says, This is certainly the most difficult verse in the New Testament. For notwithstanding the greatest and wisest men have labored to explain it, there are to this day nearly as many different interpretations of it as there are interpreters. I shall not employ my time nor that of my reader with a vast number of the discordant and conflicting opinions. In Gill's Bible Commentary, who was a scholar and pastor in the Baptist Church, he says, But what is his sense is not easy to be understood, or what right, or custom, or thing, or action he refers to. In Matthew Poole's Bible Commentary, he says, A very difficult text, and variously expounded. In Pulpit's Bible Commentary, who had several contributors who were mostly Anglican, he says, the interpretations of this verse are so numerous that it is not even possible to give a catalog of them. In Johann Bengel's Bible commentary, who is a professor of theology in the Lutheran church, he says, furthermore, of the baptism for or over the dead, the variety of interpretations is so great that he who would collect, I shall not say, those different opinions would have to write a dissertation. And then back to Pulpit's Bible commentary, he's actually honest about what this means. The apostle evidently alludes to some custom of the early church, or some sentiment that prevailed concerning a custom which has not come down to us. The only tenable interpretation of the passage is that there existed amongst some of the Christians at Corinth a practice of baptizing a living person in the stead of some convert who had died before that sacrament had been administered to him. And the reason why he says that custom has not come down to us is because of apostasy. And then in Lang's Bible commentary, who is a scholar associated with the Reformed Church in Germany, he says, how are we to understand these words? The simplest explanation of the act here spoken of is the suffering of oneself to be baptized for the benefit of deceased persons or in their stead, so as to redound to their advantage that the salvation mediated by baptism might fall to their lot, so that those who themselves died unbaptized might pass for baptized, and thus have part in the resurrection and the kingdom of Christ. This is one reason why I'm super grateful that God has once again called prophets and apostles, so that we actually understand what this verse is talking about, and we practice it today because it's an ordinance that's been restored in Jesus Christ's church today. I think it's funny because some anti-Church of Jesus Christ folks like to point fingers at this weird baptismal font in our temples that stands on the back of 12 cows or bulls, and they find this really odd. The reason they find it odd is because they are ignorant about what the Bible teaches. In 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 25, we learn about a basin or a sea that was placed in Solomon's temple and a description of what this basin or sea was placed on. Verse 25 reads, It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. And the sea was set above upon them, and all their hinder parts were inward. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the most biblical church on the face of the earth.